to Our Homes Ending the Housing Crisis. Today, we are joined by Professor Philip Moiser. He's an architect and a publisher. He's planned and designed projects all over the world with a particular emphasis in Eastern European and Muslim countries. And he's also an expert on our topic today, which is Soviet mass housing. He's even received the Federal Cross of Merit for his work with the countries of the former Soviet Union. So we have a very interesting topic, one um, about which not many of us in the United States know a lot about. So welcome to our webinar, Professor Moiser. Yeah, Mr. Senator, thank you very much for inviting me and I'm, I'm very uh, glad to, to give this presentation today. Great, so please take it away. All right. So, um, so I need to get the possibility to share the screen. So that's perfect. So can you just confirm you see the first slide? Panels yes. and politics, how Soviet mass housing became the most successful home building program of the 20th century. I'm, um, yeah, as, as the Senator already introduced me. So I, I have been working quite a while for nearly 20 years on the subject of prefabrication in, in the housing industry. And I came across with the history, the long history of the Soviet um, mass housing, uh, which was introduced after the death of Stalin in the late 50s. Before I start today, I please allow me to, to, to introduce this book, uh, what I did uh, with, with Dimitri Sadorin from Belarus a couple of years ago. So we, 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 we did a catalog or we published a catalog of a mass housing series, which were introduced in the USSR. All in total, there were around 800, 800 different series. Um, whereas there was one series, the series 1464, which had 400 variations, but at least we have around 400 different series. And you can imagine that this is a, it's a, it's a such a complex and long story. So I can only um, I can only tell you something about the peak of this of this iceberg. So when I'm talking about the success of Soviet mass housing, which was only possible because the entire construction industry was aligned with the state program. I'm, I'm, I have to point out this in the beginning, because uh, the history of, of, of the Soviet mass housing is something which was only possible because the state was the client, the state was the, the, the driving engine behind, the state made the, the strategy and the state was, the, was, was planning itself and, and doing the construction. So everything was, was organized and, 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 and managed by the state. Otherwise, it could not have been realized in such a huge scale. And um, what is also important to, uh, to highlight is that if we talk about um, mass housing in general, about prefabrication, all of us, we have some, 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 some images in our mind. And uh, from, for me, it's, it's, it's very important to, to point out that the Soviet mass housing needs to be accepted as an important chapter of the 20th century history. But where should we start? That, that's a question we, we may discuss today. And I try to introduce that to you and try to give an answer. And that the construction method of prefabrication is not today's problem, but the urban pattern and politics of ownership. So, so this is important to uh, also to, to, to say in the beginning, uh, because the construction method itself, it is, has nothing to do with, with, with the politics itself with social housing in general. Um, so, and if we, and this is how I understand also this series of webinars, what you, what you are presenting here. Um, so it aims to, 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 to start a discussion on how to solve housing problems in, in Hawaii. And um, so, so don't be afraid if we talk about prefabrication because with prefabrication, you can do the most, the most beautiful uh, buildings. So what, what was so interesting or fascinating for me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an architect from Germany and from Western Germany. I grew up in West Germany in the capitalist part of Germany. I never have been to the, to the, to the Eastern part. And, and so many people ask me, what is so, what is so interesting for you to, 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 to work or to, to do research many, many years on a subject 
which uh, which is form the former socialist part of your country or socialist uh, countries in, in, in Eastern Europe. What is fascinating is, so the idea of designing one series or developing one series and covering a third of the hemisphere of our of our world, and and, and, and you see that here in this in this um, um, diagram, starting from the Baltic Sea and 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 leading to to the Pacific Ocean, and to have one idea of housing for the masses. Uh, uh, this is professor. Really yeah. Um, I think we're not seeing your slides. We're still stuck on the, the first slide for you. Okay, so this is, thanks for this information. Ah, yes, perfect. Now you see something else, okay. Okay, so, all right. Okay, so um, so this was the the slide I was talking about, uh, covering a distance of seven thousand five hundred miles from the Baltic Sea to Pacific Ocean, uh, seven thousand five hundred miles out of um, uh, 20, 24, uh, thousand miles, which is a third of the whole hemisphere. And um, coming coming to, to to this to this place, Honolulu. Um, so I, it was interesting for me to, to just to, 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 to understand. Uh, so the distance from Honolulu to, to Chicago is the same distance as if you would go from Honolulu to, to Vladivostok. So uh, talking about Soviet, um, the history of Soviet um, housing, Soviet architecture is not that far away from the place uh, you are uh, located in the moment. And um, so I appreciate that uh, you are also going to have this, this focus to this, to this area. Um, and since uh, we are in, 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 a, in a context of also a political discussion, I'm going to start with this quote from Nikita Khrushchev, who was the, the successor of, of Stalin in the Soviet Union. And, and he, is, he, he became famous for, for one of his quote to say, our construction program is of vital importance. We have an obligation to significantly speed up, improve the quality of and reduce the cost of construction. In order to do so, there is only one path and that's the path of the most extensive industrialization of construction. So it is said that he was the one, the driving, the driving machine behind um, um, all this um, transformation of the construction economy in the Soviet Union, which led us to these kind of cities. This is an aerial image of, of Leningrad, today's St. Petersburg um, buildings or housing, uh, four, uh, four to five floors, um, all look the same. Uh, and it was already in the Soviet Union, it was indicated as a quite boring and unsatisfying solution. And, uh, and please allow me to, to show you some, some slides or some, some, uh, some comic strips from a very famous um, movie, which was uh, quite popular in the Soviet Union. And it is even shown today for, for New Year Eve. So the, uh, the, his, the, this, uh, the, the title of this movie is Irony of Fate by, by Eldar Riyad Zanov from 1975. And it shows, you see all these different um, images. You should, it's, it, it's an architect quite enthusiastic designing, designing a, a building with, with balconies, with arches and, and, and uh, with nice uh, staircases. And, uh, and during his, 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 uh, his trip through the bureaucracy, um, he's uh, getting nervous and getting completely um, uh, confused, uh, and as you see the second, the second uh, part of this of this uh, uh, short uh, cartoon, um, everything is removed by the bureaucracy, and in the end, uh, he has uh, buildings all look the same, generic, generic buildings, and they are covering the whole Soviet Union. Um, you see that in the uh, in in the desert areas, in the in the in the permafrost. And, and even in the in the uh, uh, seaside areas, and so the idea was to to, to cover uh, the whole world with one type of of building. Uh, this was a, a quite ironic, quite ironic 
um, a movie and it was uh, quite quite successful because as we know uh, Soviet people were, were, were quite humoristic uh, people and whenever it came to, to politics and it was not possible to, to have this free speech, they tried to have some kind of meta level or uh, try to substitute uh, political critiques by doing such kind of cultural uh, cultural approaches. So the so the, the so one of my 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 main my main uh, target and, and motivation for these uh, for this Soviet uh, for for this um, um, research on, on on Soviet mass housing was to uh, to, to identify uh, ten parameters for a typology of mass housing, so that so, so that today and also for for the future we have some kind of method and an instrument to understand what happened there and just to try a, 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 some kind of, of supporting tool to, to read uh, the cities of the former Soviet Union because they are all influenced by this way of mass housing. And whenever I'm, I'm talking about this kind of systematization, uh, uh, Claude Lévi-Strauss, uh, the, so the French philosopher, comes into my mind saying classification, even if it is uneven and arbitrary, preserves the richness and the diversity of what it grasps. By determining that everything should be taken into account, it facilitates the formation of a memory. So I'm also trying to, to, to give all of us some, some memory and to value what has been built in the former Soviet Union. And just imagine even today, still today, 107 million people still live in these prefabricated panel buildings in the former Soviet Union. And this is a huge, a huge number, which always has to be, uh, also has to be valued. Um, and I think all these people, they, they deserve a kind of scientific background or also they need to be integrated into the into the uh, in our writing on building and construction history so i'm i'm just uh, trying to 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 guide you through these 10 parameters which i which i developed to to to, to understand what is um, uh, prefabrication in general and what it is in particular when we talk about the history of the soviet union um, so, so, so you will have a um, possibility to download or to, to get the presentation. So I, I move on and I, I go through all these 10 steps. And first of all, what I was mentioning before, uh, you, you need to understand that the whole so the Soviet Union was organized as a, as, a, as, a, as a entity or as a body where everything was like a pyramid so the central committee of the of the of the of the party and the ministry of of the whole uh, USSR was the body who decided everything and everything was was brought and reported to this to the peak of this pyramid and then from the pyramid it was it, it went down after this decision to these 15 different republics with their own ministries and um, and all these uh, gostroy which was the the state the state uh, ministry of construction and all these uh, ministries had their own um, uh, planning um, uh, uh, planning instruments which was planning institutes but they also were running the house building um, factories everything what i said before was part of the state it was in the hand of the state which was equal to the to the party so there was a, 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 a very close connection between political ideas and the possibility and the ability to implement these uh, these um, uh, political ideas. And what is also important to uh, to know is that we we always have this uh, trilogy of a, a a new political idea. Uh, which which was saying, okay, so let's let's try to densify the cities. Let's try to to extend the cities, um, and, and 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 a second and, and as a second step, uh, so, so we can always find in in the different um, um, generation or the different periods, we can always find 
uh, adjustments of, of uh, building laws, which were, which were referring to these political ideas. And then as a, second, as a third step, uh, we always find new generations of theories, which were referring to these new building laws. So this is also an, another indicator that the state, 100% state run industry, political idea, adjustment of building laws, and in the end, a new generation, which was developed by engineers, but also by, by architects. And this brought us, this brought us to, 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 house, uh, to, to housing series, um, which were very similar, even they were in a completely different uh, 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 region of, of, of the climate. And, and this was, uh, let's say, these, this pair of, of, of floor plans, what we see here, was also one of these initial uh, initial uh, um, initial impulse for me to start doing some research on on this on this subject because I have been in I have been working in, in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, Central Asia for quite a long time, and uh, and people always uh, told me about uh, uh, anecdotes about this small uh, the the small. Um, uh, apartments where, where, where they were living in and uh, ex explained, described some, some details. And then uh, a couple of weeks later, I've been to, to, to St. Petersburg and people told me the same story. And then I, I, I tried to find out why are they telling the, the same story even they are 3000 kilometers uh, a distance in between. And then I, I, I tried to compare the, the floor plans of these two, two apartments. And, and you, you see uh, uh, very similar, very similar plans. Uh, Tashkent, a uh, 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 city in, in a very warm uh, and, and dry area, and Leningrad in a northern area, uh, quite cold in the winter, but more or less similar or even same uh, floor plans. And, and, and this was so, yeah, it, it was something where I tried to dig and, and at that time uh, not really, um, so there were no other uh, researchers and scholars in, in, the, in this field. And I, and that I had to, to start from scratch uh, to, to work in, the, in this field. And uh, when it comes to, uh, to this idea, remember this uh, from, from Baltic Sea to, to Pacific Ocean, we have uh, more or less same, uh, same floor plans, uh, where, whereas they were different in, in some, some, some parameters, um, because as you can imagine, in a, a building or doing some planning for, for housing planning in the desert, in permafrost or subtropical areas must be different, so there was, there were some small uh, differences in all these in all these uh, plants. Uh, Tashkent, an area of, of seismic risk, so they even so this is, is, a, is a, a test a test machine uh, to, to try to find out the seism seismic safety of, of a model uh, scaled one by five. On the on the right hand side, we see uh, we see another um, uh, five floor panel building in Yakutia, in, in Siberia, where is permafrost. And you see that the building on the right hand side, it stands on, 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 uh, on, on columns uh, to not touch the ground. Um, so this was a special um, method. And I'm, I'm, I'm showing these two extreme examples to show that, uh, so the same I'm just trying to, to simplify uh, the whole the whole history, but but just just to imagine uh, same floor plans for seismic regions, same floor plans for uh, this permafrost regions. And it worked well, so I have to say. And um, what is also um, uh, part of these uh, parameters, if we do some analysis of the um, of, of prefabrication, we always have to, to, to keep in mind that prefabrication by far is not only the panel, what we see in, in the bottom left, but a prefabrication can start from, from wooden series, a brick series, large blocks, a frame, a, a skeleton, but also spatial units equivalent cont to, to, to containers. It's also possible. So if we talk about prefabrication is one part, and we talk about serious serial planning, uh, which could be more or less the same, and, and, and we have we have the, in, in, in history, especially in, in the Soviet Union, a serial planning. So one type project, which was built a hundred or even a thousand times, was mainly done or was mainly constructed with panels, but could have also been 
um, with, of course, with slightly with slight um, um, modifications, also be built in other um, construction methods. So, uh, so also this, um, uh, so the, the fifth parameter, the number of floors and building is excess. So everything was nearly more or less nearly was everything. Everything was was possible in 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 designing the. Um, the, 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 the residential buildings. And um, so there were, were the building access, the, the classical one, the, the, so um, uh, let's say the access through the, through, the, um, through the inner part, the corridor type or the gallery type. So all these different um, 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 building types we, we find in, in all over the Soviet Union. And of course you can imagine the gallery type was more focused to the to the to the southern areas where where it was possible during the whole year to access through a gallery, and and the classic ones you see on the left hand side more focused or more uh, implemented in the in the cold areas. So and uh, I showed you that uh, that aerial picture from from the sixties from Leningrad where all the buildings would look the same, and and you would say okay such a boring city we would. We, we don't want to have such a boring city which is connected to prefabrication and repeating the same building typology. But even in the Soviet Union, or especially in the Soviet Union, um, so we find everywhere, I really have to say everywhere we find um, the, the, um, the attempt of the architects to, di to, to, to have a diversification of, of all these um, uh, modular buildings and especially the, the balconies on the left hand side, um, facades, facade design, but also interior design um, was, was, a, was, a, was a field for the architect and for the interior architects to, yeah, to, 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 to make a very individual um, pattern or an individual code to a skeleton, which was more or less the same. And I just show you uh, show you the uh, the wide range of what was possible even in the in the Soviet Union. So I, I show you one one example from a from a an Uzbek um, uh, Uzbek artist uh, Nikolai Zharsky, uh, who did on the right hand side you see this this design and, 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 and a cosmonaut floating in front of a zodiac. Uh, of course, uh, it, it, is, it is obvious that this is that is uh, that is referring to to Leonardo da Vinci, uh, the, the the man or the human being in the center of the world. We have this square and 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 this and this circle, and, and obviously uh, uh, referring to this. And the um, uh, we we see this cosmonaut on the next page. You see the, the this this artistic approach. On the left hand side, this this colored um, design. On the right hand side, a picture of what was implemented, and you see all these political the political ideas which which stand behind. We have the the cosmonaut floating with in, in the right on on the, on the left hand side. You, you see this this um, nuclear power. You have a Sputnik. Uh, then you have this um, a more classical um, idea or more, more classical. Um, image of, of the zodiac in the background, and and, and down uh, next to, to his to his legs, we see a, 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 a capsule which was flying to the uh, to the space, and this satellite dish uh, uh, then uh, uh, and, and flanked from from both sides with this um, oriental um, oriental and, and flower flower pattern so it, so it was a, on the one hand we had this political approach political message within all these huge huge um, facades uh, you see this is a, this is a, a picture from the 80s so it was implemented in the 80s and these uh, these buildings were built for a for the workers of a aviation craft uh, factory and these, you can see on, on on these facades that the subject was uh, yeah, the, the man and flying through the sky or flying to the to, uh, through the orb orbit. Um, just another example from from Tashkent. Not all the uh, designs which were done by Jarsky and his brothers. So he had, he had two brothers, Piotr and Alexander, who also worked in this field. So so most of the of the uh, of these patterns or or these facade mosaics, they are unpolitical. They are more trying to to meet the local traditions 
And as you know, in, in Uzbekistan, one of the most southern, um, uh, most southern um, republics of the former Soviet Union, quite very much influenced by uh, Persian architecture, by even by Indian architecture. So, and this is the reason why they have all these colorful and and uh, very, in my opinion, quite nice, um, uh, uh, yeah, patterns on this on this panel buildings. Um, let's let allow me just to, to also to focus on the on the on, on industrial production process. Um, and I, I tried to, 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 to compare a picture on the left-hand side, uh, which is a, 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 a panel, panel factory in Almaty, uh, today's uh, 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 Kazakhstan. On the right-hand side, uh, a picture from a today's um, uh, uh, panel building uh, factory. Um, and and the, the, what I want to say is that the, the construction method and the production method is not that much different. So they, they are using different machinery, but the system itself, it's, it's, it's still the same today. There is not a, not, not, not a big a difference on the left-hand side, a picture from the 80s and then on the right-hand side uh, on, on, from, from, the, from today, uh, panels which, uh, for, for interior walls, which are, which are produced in, in, in a work vertical way. The other ones, so those were, they are produced in, in, in a horizontal, in a horizontal way. So, the, the, so if I'm saying that the, the construction method today is not that much different, and I'm saying that even in former times, in earlier times, the technology in the Soviet Union was very, very advanced. And I even come to the conclusion that, especially for East Germany, which was part of this Eastern Bloc, um, so the the, um, the the industry, the, the construction industry, was one of the most advanced in whole Europe when it comes to the question of prefabrication. So when we talk about prefabrication and prefabrication of of large panels made out of concrete, what we see here in in this image, we, so we have to we have to be aware that the 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 transport of a panel um, should not ex exceed more than 200 kilometers because otherwise even in the so in, in the socialist uh, economic e economy it was not affordable to transport panels for more than 200 kilometers so that was the reason why even in, especially in, in the Soviet Union maybe this is also an interesting figure um, after Khrushchev had this the speech to to the nation more than 800 um, uh, house building factories were were built and opened uh, within uh, in the whole country. Of course, uh, the Soviet Union and Russia today is uh, by 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 um, by, uh, by area. It's, it's the biggest country in the world, and uh, in, in compared to this uh, to this huge area, eight hundred factories is not that much. But in, in fact, eight hundred factories had to be to be built. Even today in Russia. We, we find many, many housing uh, estates which are assembled with prefabricated concrete panels. And when this is, uh, of course, this is a picture from 2015, but I, I, show, I, I, I selected this picture just to, 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 to make you understand that if we talk about uh, urban patterns and if we talk about the scale of a building, it very much depends on the distance to the um, to, the, to, to, to the panel factory, on one hand, uh, one point. And on the other hand, it, it, so the, the urban pattern very much depends on the technique, te on the technology of the crane and, and on all this assembly um, um, machinery. And you see the radius, the radius, what, what is shown in this, in this picture uh, shows that there's one crane and with one crane, you can, uh, you can serve this this entire this entire uh, construction site and this was very much influencing and if we if we if we uh, just uh, recall and, and just compare the different patterns which were used or which were planned and implemented during all the years on, on so, so we see that this was very much um, um, very much influenced by the technology of production and the technology of transport and the technology of assembling. So in the end, um, so the, the idea of the, the, the cities which were built 
all over the Soviet Union. So there was not that, let's say, the traditional idea what kind of society we are, what kind of society we it intend to be, but and then we start working on the on the marketplace and the, and and uh, uh, commercial areas around the marketplace, and then we have residential areas with some greenery and sport facilities uh, around. No, so the idea was, or let's say the the, the motivation or the the requirements on on the, on, the, on the urban patterns very much uh, depended on the on the technology of assembling. And we just on the on left-hand side, we have the super block, which was still built in a more or less traditional way. And we, we see how all these different residential areas or the residential buildings try to, 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 to form or to create an, an inside and outside. So we have courtyards and public areas in between. On the right-hand side, you see the industrialization of the urban pattern already, because we only have this row, this rows, which was which were the most easiest way to to assemble a building. Just put a crane and some 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 rails, and just do and just assemble one um, one of these uh, panels, uh, panel, uh, one of these buildings. And uh, in, in the second generation, it was more creative so it should, should should be creative uh, geometry what was the, the, the keyword and then in the in the third generation from the late 70s and, and 80s we had all these snakes because it, it, it became the, the the scale became bigger and bigger and the um the different or let's say the assembly as the assembling um, um technology became became more sophisticated so that it was possible to have bigger scales. I'll just show you some, some examples. So, but before I show you the examples, I have to, to, to give you another, um, um, let's say another, um, uh, I just compare the different series. Um, uh, so because that might be a, one question from your side. So how to, how, to, how to understand or how to recognize a series. And I tried, I tried to, to compare that with, 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 with games, what we all know, the chess, the domino, the Tetris. And just to, to get an, uh, just a very simple idea. So, so in the first generation of, 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 the, Soviet, of the Soviet housing in, in, the late, in the late 50s, so, one, so, so it was only possible for the architects to, to build one building from a series. So, so, so there was, there was one, you see this, this building with three, three sections, so it was not flexible. And only in the second generation, so when, when, when the chess was, let's say the chess was broken and we had some domino um, pieces, it was possible to, to do some kind of um, uh, geometric, um, uh, geometric forms. Um, and, and each building was understood as a single, as a single section. And only in the third, in the third generation, what you see on the right hand side, so the, the smallest unit of what the architect could work with was the was the apartment itself. And then the, the and just also trying to, to, to simplify this, but also here. So it was possible for the architect to stick a building based on the different elements of this, let's call it Tetris game. And you see on, 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 the, on the top on the top right. So how uh, how the how the buildings became different and and with, with the same with the same element it was possible to have different different uh, um, buildings and you could continue this um, these these generations um, and maybe this more con uh, more familiar with, with all the, the American prefabrication so the the fourth generation which was introduced in the early 90s and is still used today in in, in many parts not only in the former Soviet Union but all over the world so so today the uh, all these series or the the pro production companies or the factories they produce more or less a kind of Lego so they have fixed, um, elements and architects and, and developers can choose from an element of from a catalog of element and do individual buildings out of these of these um, of these elements and the, the, the fifth generation what, what is the most advanced um, uh, thanks to the to the to to, to uh, C, uh, CAD and and to um, to all this computer um, uh, computer systems and technology 
Today, we are able to design any building and with the help of the computer, we can cut the building into pieces in, in the computer and then the pieces are prefabricated and we can do any individual building prefabricated um, uh, to build like, like a puzzle. So I, I call this fifth generation a kind of puzzle. So I'm, I'm coming to, to the end and, and uh, please uh, allow me, I'm, I just selected some, some, some examples. I'm not saying that these are the most beautiful examples, but um, what, I, what I also understood is if, if so what, what you require in, 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 in Hawaii in the moment is not tiny houses, so where, where, where there's a small garage with a small building for one family. So what, what, what you, it, what, it seems to me what you require is, um, is a solution or you need some, some, some ideas or some, some, some impulse for the discussion uh, how to solve um, social problems in, in the housing industry for the masses. And um, so this is a, this is a, a, a circle in in, in, in in the Russian capital of Moscow, which was built in the in the late uh, 60s. You see this this huge scale, not only by the number of floors, but also by the by the whole appearance. Just a ring, quite uh, so it could also be uh, identified as a as a brutalist brutalist building, but also. I also um, selected, also I just got some, 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 some sketches from, from, from the archive, um, uh, from Soviet architects from, from the 70s who tried to do some, some buildings which, which could be implemented also in, in, the, in the Western part of the world, uh, quite advanced and sophisticated uh, buildings, a, a small uh, high riser built obviously out of of, 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 of containers. Um, so these kind of containers were all, also built or uh, implemented in Minsk and Belarus. So they were quite advanced when it came to the, to the question of prefabricated containers out, made out of, out of um, concrete. And you see the crane is just lifting one of these um, containers which look like table, but they were they were, uh, this was, everything was experiments. So they were experimenting with these kind of, with these kind of uh, systems, but due to the fact, now we come, we, we come back to the, to, the, to the question of how to transport. Um, so you, you can imagine that it's much easier to, 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 to ship and to transport a single, a single um, wall. But in this case, you had a whole, a whole room, a whole container, uh, which was more or less four times or even five times um, heavier. And all these, uh, these elements or these units were up to 20 tons. And of course, this was only possible in the, in the 80s to implement these kind of, or to lift these kind of weight. Um, and you see this is uh, 40, 50 meters um, uh, high, which is quite, uh, yeah, a big dimension. So, and and but just to 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 um, just to to to, uh, to close this uh, this presentation. So so uh, also in in in, uh, in the Soviet Union there were some ideas how to how to use these uh, the, this, the idea of prefabrication to um, to have this mass housing, but not uh, not uh, looking as boring as we had that in the, in the in the beginning. You see, this is a is another another idea of a huge of a huge wall within a city uh, and with some 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 uh, not rooftop but but garden areas um, in between lifted from from the ground so quite uh, uh, yeah, uh, it, it looks quite uh, light not too heavy due to this uh, to the possibility to look through this building but also all the, not not implemented and not realized but uh, ideas on how to differentiate the uh, the heights of the building and to to to, to have not not an urban pattern which always looks the same but to have a, a landmark building and i'm going to close with one of the the biggest uh, one of the biggest um, um, uh, housing or residential uh, buildings which was built in soviet union this is in tulskaya uh, metro station in in moscow a building which uh, which is 400 meters long and not, not everything was prefabricated, but mainly it was prefabricated 
um, and, and it, this is this should be yeah, this should uh, should be my, my 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 closing image just to to give you an idea of uh, what we are talking about when it comes to the question of of mass housing in Soviet Union, and uh, yeah, allow me this uh, this this closing image. Uh, I just was using your 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 image from from the from the uh, from your, your our homes series, and who knows. So this is my 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 hope that um, uh, so I could give you I could I could share my part of my my knowledge on the on the Soviet uh, um, prefabrication and um, yeah maybe we can have oh, I'm, I'm I'm happy to 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 answer your your questions and uh, before I do this so so, so maybe if everything came uh, looked very heavy and it's serious. But in fact, uh, so I'm, 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 it's, it's quite a, it's a quite joyful uh, subject, and I just want to, to close with this with this um, with this card game what we produced also a couple of years ago. So, uh, so it's called the top trumps, and we, we tried to 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 to, to make a, a, a nice card game out of it with all these different types of of um, mass housing in the Soviet Union. It was quite uh, successful. It's, it's sold out. And um, so this is just to, to give you an idea what is um, what is also possible if we talk about the um, yeah the mass housing in the Soviet Union. So it was less boring than you thought in the beginning. So I'm I'm happy to 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 answer your questions. Thank you so much for that fascinating tour of Soviet era. Um, mass housing construction, again, a topic that most of us know very little about, and I think we all know a little bit more now. Um, to our audience members, you're welcome to type your questions into the Q&A, as I see some people have already done. Um, I'll kick it off with a couple questions myself. So Professor Moiser, you discussed the um, political conditions that made this housing construction program um, possible. What were those political conditions like during the Khrushchev era? Why did he feel that this mass housing construction program was so important to devote his time and the nation's resources to? Yeah, so when, when so in, in the late Stalin era, housing and residential um, construction was mainly done for the elite. Um, so maybe you have all you have in mind, or some of you have in mind these skyscrapers, which are the seven, the so-called seven sisters, which were built in 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 in, in Moscow. Uh, some of them are residential skyscrapers, and 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 you would think that the whole whole Soviet Union was was uh, filled or was 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 covered with these kind of neoclassical neoclassical palaces for the workers. How it was how it was explained, um, but in fact. Most of the people still lived in, 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 in wooden barracks. So even in Moscow, in, in the center of Moscow, people lived in wooden barracks. After um, Stalin died, um, hundred thousand and millions of people were were, were freed or were, were released from from these um, prison camps in Siberia, and they went to the cities. Um, so there was a big urbanization process ongoing, and for for for, for Nikita Khrushchev, it was. So the construction policy or the, 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 the housing policy was a field where he, quite smart guy in that, in that sense, he immediately understood that this is a field of politics where he, he could benefit from. So, and this was one of his motivations to, to jump into, into this field and to, um, of, of course, even in the late Stalin era, so there were some first, uh, First um, experiments and and some 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 articles that had been working in this field of prefabrication, but in in the end it was Khrushchev to to start this this program and and I was uh, I, I always say that this was the, one of the or this, maybe this was the biggest the biggest um, construction program by a state which was ever which was ever started and implemented. Uh, but it was only possible to, to come to, to your second uh, question, uh, part of the question. It was only possible because it was a totalitarian state, and and the and the whole economy was um, was focused on state-run finances, planning, 
assembly, um, construction, assembling, and even um, distributing uh, the, the houses to the uh, to the um, uh, yeah, to, to the to the people who, who who moved in there. So everything was organized by the state, and um, so I'm 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 always uh, thinking about thinking about would that be possible today? And and um, to be realistic, it's it's hard. It's hardly to to imagine that you would in a you would be able in a, in a in a, in a democracy in a, in, a, in a capitalist economy to do something like this because our because our our whole system is completely uh, um, diversified and uh, so you you need a strong hand from the from the from the from the position of the state to implement such kind of of of, of housing program. One more question for me. So growing up, I spent a lot of time visiting relatives in China and traveling in other parts of Asia. And you know, the building renderings and floor plans that you showed were actually quite familiar to me from, um, from the big cities of China. Um, I, I know that in Japan too, there are a lot of similar projects to these. So it sounds like this model was not just adopted in the Soviet Union, but it's, inspired countries around the world to um, create similar types of mass housing. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And, um, and um, so, so I, I hope, I, I hope you, you do not misunderstand me. What I was, what I was always trying to, to, to show is that these, that these, um, uh, that these floor plans and the designs of, of the buildings. Um, so they were, so, the, so they were always architects behind so there was a it was not only um, um, a bureaucracy and abstract system uh, without a face and everything was was done by engineers and automatically no it was so there were architects behind all these floor plans who tried to to find the best solution and i think this is uh, this is something which has only ha also has to be highlighted as an architect, if I have the responsibility to design a type series, um, and I'm aware that this building might be built a hundred times, a thousand times, I have a higher responsibility as if I just do a single, a single, a single family building, uh, where I might fail. If I fail, I fail to do a housing or a living area for a for a. Um, uh, for one family only, but if I fail to design a full series, I fail to create homes or affordable homes, nice homes, for, or convenient homes for thousands of people. Okay, great. Um, we have uh, a couple of questions concerning the um, environmental impacts of these buildings. Was there a significant carbon footprint for this prefabricated mass housing from a life cycle perspective? Um, and were these developments designed for cooling, lighting through orientation, shape, and materials to take advantage of more passive methods um, rather than using a lot of energy? Yeah. So what 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 I found out, I have to say that I, I did not yet do a deep research in this field, but um, since the all these buildings, so in the beginning, the so-called Khrushchev gas, so how they were called in the beginning, um, so they were intended intended to have a lifetime of twenty five to thirty years only. So the idea was to uh, to, to 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 build as much as much. Uh, um, uh, housing uh, space as possible, and to to demolish and have uh, um, uh, let's say a, re a refreshment after thirty or after one generation. But it, but even today these buildings exist, and uh, we have the and we have the the problem today, especially in Moscow and, and St. Petersburg, that in inner city areas we have a low density, and that's the reason why. Why, um, uh, why the city of Moscow has started in, in two programs in the, late, in the late 90s, but also five years ago to demolish these areas and to, to densify um, these, these neighborhoods. Um, so this is uh, one part when it comes to the, to the uh, 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 density. When it comes to the, to the question of uh, technology, um, so since they were just 
built in a very, very cheap way. So the, the, uh, the uh, housing, uh, let's say the, the building technology was quite low. So, um, so that means, um, so, so you, you cannot expect that there is a, a high level of technology inside. So it, it, especially in, in the Southern region, like, like Uzbekistan or Turkmenistan. So the idea was always to have f f um, um, floor plans of, of, in, of these apartments, which, which have a connection to both sides of the facade to the front facade and to the back facade to allow opening the windows and to have fresh air going through the through the apartment uh, which is a very easy and simple way of having a natural ventilation um, so this was was one this, this this was one idea on the other hand uh, since it was done in a very in a very um, a cheap way uh, there was only a low level of sound insulation. So, uh, so there are, um, I think uh, everyone who, who ever lived in such kind of building, uh, you would always know what, what the neighbor is doing when he's uh, uh, waking up in the morning and brushing his teeth and going to the kitchen because it was quite, it was, so, so you, could, you could even hear what the neighbor was, was doing uh, because he had, he had thin, very thin uh, um, uh, walls and also the sound ins insulation between different levels was not the best so from so I, I i'm 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 not I'm, I'm, i would say so we can't really learn for today uh, how to how to reduce the um, uh, uh, carbon footprint and and whatever so the only thing what what we might learn is um that that those that those areas um, with a low density, have a higher level of green. So, so a lower density, um, more green, more uh, courtyards, which after, after 50, 60 years, uh, big trees inside. Uh, but this is something which is not so much, let's say, typical for Soviet Union, but you would find this everywhere. So we have a question about the life in these projects. So you showed that photo of the 400 meter long metro station housing project in Moscow. And maybe you could talk more generally, um, what was the cost to live in units like this? What was the rent? Was it affordable for most Soviet uh, workers? Um, and what was daily life like inside these units? Did they have access to you know, stores, retail facilities, medical facilities, schools um, integrated within these housing uh, buildings. Yeah. So, if you just remember the the urban patterns, what I was showing, I I, I did not uh, highlight how they were organized. So, so there was uh, everything was organized in so-called micro districts, and within the micro district, so there was uh, de de depending on on the size of of, of a city, there were. Uh, 5,000 to 25,000 people with, living within one micro dis district. And the idea, so this was quite, quite interesting uh, because there was not such a, such a high level of, of, of individual traffic. So the idea was always that you only have 10 minutes to the kindergarten by walking, 15 minutes to the school. To within each micro district, you had um, supermarkets, you had a cultural, um, 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 uh, institutions, uh, even a library. So, so you could have lived only within your micro district um, to uh, to have an affordable or to have a um, um, let's say a convenient life. Um, but also, this was only possible because the state was running all these institutions and all these facilities. Um, so, and, and I know that from, from East Germany, after the reunification and the capitalization of the former socialist part of Germany, um, many of these uh, cultural and public facilities had to close due to the fact that they were not economically anymore and, um, and people were started suffering. Um, and and so, so from that point of view, again saying, all this structure was only possible because the state was investing very much money, not only in the, in the facilities, in the social facilities, but also in supporting and 
um, yes, supporting the uh, the houses, the, the, the rent for the for the houses. And um, I, I can just give you an example. So in in, in East Germany, so the uh, so the equivalent for for one for one square meter, which is ten square feet, was around uh, more or less one dollar. So so this was, and, and and so it was just it was just nothing. And the idea was that everyone should have the possibility to, to, to receive an apartment which he could pay for. And, um, and the, um, the rent prices in East Germany, they were frozen on the level of 1936. So, even, so, so, in, 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 so frozen at a status from, from, uh, from the Third Reich, um, so which was completely, uh, completely, um, um, uh, how to say, com com completely um, uh, senseless in terms of economy, uh, in, in terms of um, uh, real cost. So it was a political decision to reduce the rent. So this was, uh, and, and, and people say, um, um, so, so, so the, the, the collapse of, of, of East Germany and, and the GDR was mainly, um, mainly um, um, uh, let's say, uh, was, was mainly uh, happening due to the fact that the state could not pay for all this investment in this housing and construction area. area. So that means, uh, so I'm not saying that the, the whole socialist uh, system failed due to the fact that they, that they supported or that they, they, they failed by uh, trying to solve the, the housing problems as, as a social problem in our society. Um, but it was, it was one factor or let's say one, one reason why in the end all these cities or these, these countries were bankrupt. Unfortunately, our time is short, so we'll get to one more question and then we'll have to wrap it up. A couple of folks have asked about the density of these communities. Um, it looks like there were some very tall buildings, but there was also a lot of open space. Um, was there a maximum level of density? How did they uh, plan the open space and the buildings to be integrated? Yeah, so the um, so there was one uh, there was one. Um, uh, one one factor and it, in, uh, let's say one parameter and um, so so especially in East Germany I, 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 I know that quite well so the, so the the um, so the parameter or let's say the, the the value was always 250 people per hectare so um, now we have to, to find out what what is a, what is a hectare a hectare is a hundred meters by a hundred meters which is uh, which is around ten a uh, hundred thousand um, square feet. Maybe, maybe you have to correct me, but but a hundred meter by a hundred meters, one hectare, and uh, two hundred fifty people living in this area. So, so even this was even this was a this was a number, a quite low number, which was let's say for the for the for the time of the socialist society, it was nice to live there because the it was a quite low density. But after capitalization of all these. Um, housing estates, um, it came out that the density is too low so that all these other institutions like cultural institutions and, 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 um, and um, uh, commercial institutions could survive. So that means in, in the end, you always have to, if you would like to have this um, um, a green area, low density in the end, the state have, has to pay for it um, to make that happen. Otherwise, you find you, you need to find other other um, other ways how to co-finance uh, these kind of, of, of low density. So that means in the end, if we if we if we try to, to transfer that to our to our uh, today's discussion on on how we are going to 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 plan our cities of the future, we definitely need to be aware that if we would like to have low density, more green, um, a, a lower carbon footprint, we have to pay for it. And then the question is if, if, the, if, the, if the private, the private uh, people are not willing to pay, um, 
but they are voting for, for a government to do so, then in the end, the, the, the state has to pay for it. That, that must be clear for all of us. Yeah, that's a great lesson for um, a modern capitalist society like ours. And I think we've all learned a lot today. Um, there, you know, I was struck by how some of the challenges that the Soviet Union faced were similar to the challenges that many countries, including ours, have faced, and how um, their solutions, while implemented on a mass scale, um, you know, and therefore might not be appropriate for a society like ours, were, you know, really, they, they were really trying to do the best they could with the technology they had. And in fact, it was quite advanced and very, um, and, and considered quite livable at the time. So um, it was really a lot less of the grim, drab, you know, uniform than, you know, image that we have of Soviet life. And um, it was actually quite a good way of living um, compared to what had come before it. So thank you, Professor Moiser, for helping to educate um, our community on this very interesting development, which as you point out, is an important feature of the 20th century history of this planet, and which even today has influenced, you know, generations of folks around the world, not just in the former Soviet Union, but even in other countries as well, and um, many of whom still live in these units, even today, all these years later. So uh, thank you for joining Our Homes Ending the Housing Crisis today, Professor. Mr. Senator, thank you very much. It was a pleasure, and I hope we can continue discussing this subject. Thank you very much. And have thank a you. nice day. Thank you. You too. Bye -bye. Thank you.